Hey, this is John Cena, and you are watching this WWE Fan 13. What's up guys and welcome to today's video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the top 5 rudest wrestlers I have ever met. Now before we get on with this video, I want to let you guys know, make sure you guys go follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and go check out my newest TikTok. Uh, they are all under Miss WWE Fan 13 So with that being said, let's get started. Due to the mass amount of hate comments I got on the video I made last time, which was a few years back. Um, I felt the need to have to come on here today before getting started with the list to tell you guys two things. Number one, these stories I will be telling are my experience. This is exactly what happened when I met these wrestlers. Now, if you guys went and met these same wrestlers and had different experiences and had better experiences, I'm very happy. I would never want anyone to meet a wrestler and have a bad experience. But keep in mind, just because you had a good experience doesn't mean that my experience was not bad. Just like maybe you guys met someone on my good wrestlers list and maybe you had a bad experience. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys, oh no, you know, you met so and so and I had a great experience. So that means there's no way you had a bad experience. So I just want to throw that out there. And number two, something that was commented a lot on the last video was that you guys, some of you guys, made it seem like I thought that the wrestlers owed me something or owed anyone something. And I want to come on here and say, no, I do not think that whatsoever. These wrestlers don't know me. I don't know them. I just know what I see on TV and on what they provide on social media. But I do want to say that... If you are meeting a wrestler and you paid to meet them, they should hold themselves to a certain standard. Not say that they have to go out of their way to give me the best experience I've ever had in my entire life. But I do want to say is that they could at least be pleasant. I understand some people have bad days. Don't get me wrong, I get it. You know, last time I met Mark Henry, something really bad happened and he had a really, he was upset. Rightfully so. But. Like you will see, I have a few stories about these wrestlers on more than one occasion. So that's all I want to say. You know, it sucks when you meet someone and you pay and they can't even make eye contact with you. So with that being said, let's get started with the video. So before getting into number five, I had to make a quick disclaimer. Number five, the experience, he was not rude. He was not mean, but... I know if I only did a top four, some of you guys would be like, it's not a top five, you're lying, the clickbait. So if I had to pick the worst experience that I have met a wrestler, this person would be number five. I would like to say he was not rude in any way, he was not mean, he was not like the top four, but if I had to pick one of the worst experiences besides the top four, sadly, this, next, this wrestler would have to come in number five. So just disclaimer. If you guys want to meet him, I would. It's not a horrible experience, but you don't be disappointed when it's not like all the ex other experiences that I have spoken about. So, just quick disclaimer. So, coming in at number five is Scott Steiner. So, growing up, I always wanted to meet Scott Steiner as I was a fan of him on TNA. Now, just in case for those of you who I know are inevitably, inevitably going to comment and did not listen to this disclaimer... I would like to say before I get into my story, he was not rude, he was not malicious, he was not mean. But if I did not have a top five list, someone out there would have said that it was not a top five and it was clickbait and it was something. So I had to pick the worst experience that I had meeting someone besides the top four. So with that being said, for the second time guys, this is what happened. So during WrestleMania 32 weekend, I went to WrestleCon. And I bought some kind of ticket pass that enabled me to meet some wrestlers, uh, you know, some groups of wrestlers. So I was able to meet Scott Steiner and his brother, Rick Steiner. And, you know, we went up to meet them. And Rick, super cool dude, 100% would meet again. Got up to Scott and, you know, like I said, not rude, but he just, he just, you know, he just didn't look like he wanted he wanted to be there. 
which I understand, you know, meeting a lot of fans is very tiring. I can just imagine, you know, I don't, I'm not famous like him. I, I can imagine it's probably very, very tiring. But, you know, with that being said, it always makes the experience a little awkward. You know, when I went up to him, I said hello. I handed him my item. Um, I tried to make a little small talk. And, you know, he was just kind of like, didn't really say a word. Didn't really make eye contact. He kind of just signed the item, kind of pushed it off, took the photo, and kind of just went to the next person. So, you know, like I said, he wasn't rude. He wasn't mean. He didn't do anything to upset me. But as you can see on my face in the photo, I was a little thrown off and I was a little surprised. But that is why I'd have to put him at number five. So, coming in at number four, it 100% has to be Zeus. So, I met Zeus in Tucson, Arizona at a small little wrestling convention that they put on. And, you know, this convention, I bought a pass that enabled me to meet everybody that was at this convention. And during this time, I was very sick. I know I don't look it, but I was on steroids. I was on chemo. I was not doing good. So, and keep in mind, this uh, convention was in a small, um, kind of like in a small uh, hotel like um boardroom like you know those ho those rooms that hotels have to put on events it wasn't one of those there was no ventilation no nothing so everyone was hot even zeus was sweating as you could see and when i went up to him first of all he just did not give a crap i can tell you that he was like this with absolutely everybody who went up to meet him he was he had a bad attitude he did, definitely did not want to be there and in my opinion if you don't want to be there don't sign up for these things. But other than, anyways, but he was just rude to everybody. Short with everybody, did not care. You know, just people would try to talk to him, blew him off. It was just really awkward watching him meet other people. Like, absolutely awkward. And so when it came to my turn, I knew I was sweating because number one, chemo makes you hot in general. It's a hot room. So I tried to kind of keep a little bit of a distance from uh the wrestlers because you know usually the wrestlers as you see put your arm they put their arms around you so as you see Zeus put his arm around my nephew and I was just trying to avoid that because I knew I was sweating so first when I went up to him and he saw me he gave like a disgusted look on his face like he was disgusted with me and he was just like he made a face and I was just kind of like oh like that was kind of awkward and I apologized and told them you know I'm sorry I'm on chemo I sweat but I'm gonna stand over here I'm sorry you know but thank you for taking your time to come and do the meet and greet I appreciate it uh, I gave him the item I wanted to get signed I had it ready and I stood next to him for the photo and I tried to stand to the side and then like I said to not have him touch me because I understand when you're sweating I, I wouldn't want to touch me either, you know, but he still reached to touch me, even though I had told him I was going to stand over to the side. And when he touched me, obviously I was sweating and he looked at his hand and looked at me like I was a disgusting human being, basically. And I was already self-conscious due to the chemo and the steroids. And overall, it was just super awkward and I got super upset and it just was a really bad experience and then he got to signing the stuff he blew off my nephew rude like I understand you don't have to give me like the best experience of my life but at least to some point treat us like we're human and I can tell you definitely would never ever meet Zeus again like absolutely never so that is my experience with Zeus and coming in at number three it is the Honky Tonk Man. And you guys are probably wondering, Miss WWE Fan 13, if you met the Honky Tonk Man, why isn't the photo of you guys on the screen? Well, guys, you know, let me take you back to WrestleMania 32 weekend, to WrestleCon. So, during WrestleCon, I met many people. And as you guys know, I did get the pass for WrestleCon where you could meet wrestlers. And in this pass was the Honky Tonk Man. So I went to his table. The pass comes with one photo 
one autograph. Cool. I wanted an extra autograph, so I bought an extra autograph because I wanted to have him sign a figure, my encyclopedia, and obviously take a photo. So when I went up to him, he was nice. He smiled. Nothing too crazy, but, you know, a good interaction. He said hello, smiled, and then started signing my items. And I gave the tickets to the guy who managed his booth. I gave him the two tickets for the autograph and the one for the photo. And he takes, he signs my stuff, cool. And then he moves on to the next person. And I was like, oh, could I get a photo? Could I get my photo? And he's like, no, you got your two autographs. If you want a photo, you got to buy a photo. And I tried to explain to him, no, no, no. I, uh, you know, I, I got the, uh, I got the pass where I get a photo and an autograph. And then I bought another autograph. And I literally had the tickets. Like I'm showing him. Like, you know, he's like, no, sorry, kid. If you want a photo, you got to buy one. And I'm sitting here confused because I literally paid for everything, you know. And then he started kind of being a jerk about it, saying, you know, I'm not going to take a photo for free, blah, 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 blah. And the thing is, I'm not trying to ask for a photo. I told him, I'm not trying to ask for a photo for free. You know, I, I did buy it. Like, I had the tickets. Look, I, I gave it to the your manager. And he just kind of, like, wrote me off, basically. And I was kind of like, what the heck? And my mom was like, what the heck? And so we spoke to his manager and we're like, hey, you know, we gave you the autograph tickets and the photo tickets. And he just tried to act like I never did get it. And I even had an email confirmation because he took my tickets. But I did have an email because WrestleCon does send you emails of confirmations showing that I had a photo and two autographs. And he still just blew me off and refused, absolutely refused to do the photo. And at that point, my mom told me, you know, do you want me to buy you a photo so you can get your photo? And I told my mom at that point, nah, don't waste your money. I'd rather not have the photo. And while all this was going on, right next to Honky Tonk Man was Bushwhacker Luke. And you could tell, he, I saw him watching this interaction. And you can tell he felt so bad because he saw what happened. That when... It, I, that was the next table I was going to be going to. He was so felt so bad. He gave me an extra autograph and took two, three photos with me and honestly gave me such a good experience. And honestly, that whole experience with the Honky Tonk Man just left a super bad taste in my mouth because I did pay for the photo and the autograph and the fact that they kind of just were so money hungry and ripped me off. I, I just don't respect people like that whatsoever. So... Coming in at number two is JBL. So I met JBL on two different occasions. The first time I met JBL was, I believe, during WrestleMania 31 weekend at uh, WrestleMania Access. And, you know, as you see in the photo, he was signing with Jerry Lawler. Now, when I walked up to meet them... Um, I'm, you know, when I meet my wrestlers, the wrestlers, I walk up, I'm chill, I just tell them hello, and then I'm happy to meet them, and thank you for doing the signing. And when I went up to them, to JBL, I was like, hello, hey JBL, super nice to meet you, could you please sign this for me? Um, I really am excited to meet you, I love all the work you did with Eddie Guerrero, it's some of my favorite things, like, in, like, WWE. And he literally did not even acknowledge that I was there. He didn't look at me. He didn't say hello. Nothing. He, the entire time, he was just talking to Jerry Lawler about, I don't know what, because, you know, I'm not being nosy. And I was just kind of in shock because I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of weird. Like, he didn't, not even a hi or an acknowledgement that I was even standing there. He just grabbed my stuff and started signing. And I understand access is crazy. I understand it's overwhelming, tiring. I can just imagine how tired the wrestlers get. So I just kind of shrugged it off as if maybe he was just tired. His line was packed. And so I thought, I was a little, I was pretty bummed. I'm not going to lie to you. But I just tried to write it off as if maybe he was tired. Um, so then a few months later, I don't remember exactly how much time had gone by. Um, I was going to Alamo City Comic Con in San Antonio to meet some wrestlers and one of them being was jbl and before i make an initial initial like judgment on a wrestler and how they treat their fans i try to at least meet them two times on two different occasions and i try to you know try to see if it's different so during this time i bought my ticket to go meet him i walk up to him there's a female with him i don't know who it is i don't know if it's a wife girlfriend friend 
I don't know who it was. But I walk up to him. I say, hi, JBL. Um, it's so great to meet you. Um, I was able to meet you during Access. And I'm so glad I'm happy to meet you again. And, you know, I'm just being pleasant. And I hand him my stuff. And again, does not look at me. Does not acknowledge I'm there. And just continues to talk to the person that he's with. He does not say hi. He does not say bye. He acts like I'm completely not there. Signs the autograph. I did not get a photo because I already have a photo with him, as you guys see on the screen. And I didn't feel like getting another one, just in case it was another bad experience. Um, so, you know, he just signed an item, handed it off to me, and that was it. Like, did not, not hi, not, not even a looking, not even looking at me. He looked down the entire time and just kept talking to the girl he was with. And next to him was, um, was Ron Simmons and Ron Simmons watched this entire like interaction because they were signing as like a like a package and so Ron Simmons was the next person I was going to go meet and the interaction was so awkward and weird and like kind of messed up that Ron Simmons already felt bad literally gave me an extra autograph gave me a free 8x10 autograph took another extra photo with me and talked to me for like a good five to ten minutes like, I remember it was somewhere between five to ten minutes, and you can tell he felt bad, and he apologized, guys. No lie to you, he apologized for the interaction I had with JBL. And I, ever since that day, will never meet JBL ever again. And I do not recommend anyone to meet him, because after that, and after I made the last video, a lot of stuff has come out, and a lot of uh, fans who have met him have come out and talked about the bad experiences, and... Fair warning, guys. If you guys choose to meet him, be you're warned that it might not go very well. I hope it goes better than mine. I really, really do. But, you know, just be warned. So, coming in at number one is the experience that really, honestly, made me the most sad and most shocked. And it is meeting Jerry Lawler. So the first time I met Jerry Lawler, I was very excited. Growing up, I loved hearing him on commentary. I was always like, I always loved Jerry Lawler more than I loved, you know, any other commentator. I always thought he was so cool and I always wanted to meet him. So when, and honestly at WrestleMania 31, the reason why I got in that line was more for Jerry Lawler than it was JBL. Don't get me wrong, I wanted to meet JBL because I loved his work with Eddie, but it was Jerry Lawler that I wanted to really, really meet. And, you know, when I walked up to Jerry Lawler, um, you know, at first I spoke to JBL with a story I just told you. And as it is, I was already kind of like, oh, okay, they're ignoring me. And I tried to see maybe Jerry Lawler would maybe acknowledge me because I always thought, you see him on TV, he was like a super nice guy. And I talked to Jerry, he's like, oh, hey, Jerry, I'm so happy to meet you. Like, I'm so excited. And I try to ask him a question. And granted, I get people ask him the same question probably his entire career. But, you know, I just feel like he could have just answered the question real quick. Or he could have just said, change the subject. I don't know. I don't know what. But I asked him, you know, what was your favorite match that you've called in, in your career? And I understand he's probably answered this question a million and one times. But the fact that he couldn't even just acknowledge that I was standing there and just kept speaking to JBL as if I wasn't standing in front of him and he just signed my item and passed it off and took the photo, it just left a really bad taste in my mouth and I was honestly really upset because I was so looking forward to meeting him and I thought he was going to be a really cool guy and it just, he wasn't. So... Like JBL, I thought maybe he was tired because Access, if you guys have been to Access, Access is crazy. It is nonstop. It is go, go, go. So I was like, you know what? Maybe he was just tired. He is older. You know, maybe maybe he was tired. So a few months later, at the exact same Comic-Con, I met JBL at again. Jerry Lawler was there. And I bought tickets to meet him again. I did not buy a photo. Like, I did not buy with, with JBL either. I just bought an autograph because I had a figure I wanted him to sign. And I decided to meet him again. And when I went up to meet him, he... Well, I was about to go up to meet him. He cut for lunch. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, man's got to eat. Everyone's got to eat. So he was the last one I needed to meet. I had already met everybody else. So I decided to go do some shopping. And a little later on, my friend who was running the stands told me, Hey, Jerry Lawler's back. Um, come on over. So I run over there, and I'm the first one he's going to meet 
when he comes back. So in my head, I'm like, cool, he's had, a, I think he was on lunch for like two hours or so. So I had time to eat lunch, I had time to shop, you know, and I was like, okay, cool. He's refreshed, he ate, you know, he's good, and, you know, I'm going to meet him. So I went up to him, exact same experience as JBL. Whoever he was with, I don't know, girlfriend, wife, I don't know who it was, literally acted like I was not there and just kept speaking to the girl. I went up to him. I said, oh, Jerry, I'm so excited to meet you. I got to meet you at Access. Thank you so much for doing this signing. I'm so happy to meet you. Uh, here, please, I would love for you to sign this. Thank you so much. And he literally acted like I was not even standing there. The girl made like a side eye looking at me kind of like, I don't know if she felt awkward. I don't really know what the deal was. But it just completely blew me off as if I was not there. Just kept speaking to the girl, signed the item, you know, handed it back. Uh, asked the person if I got a photo. They said no and basically had me go on my way. And I was so shocked because I thought maybe because he was refreshed and... You know, this com not many people were meeting him that day. They were, but like it wasn't like Access where it was like full of wrestling fans. This is just like a regular Comic Con where there's superhero people, there's, you know, sports people, there's a mixture of people. So his lines weren't as crazy as it was at Access. Same with JBL. And it was still the same outcome to where he was not ex acknowledging that we were even there. And honestly, from that day on, I lost complete respect for Jerry Lawler, especially because of how he portrays himself on TV. Like, good guy Jerry Lawler. Every time I see him on TV, I don't even want to see him, to be honest with you. So, that is my number one, who I will never, ever meet, ever again. So, yeah, guys, that is the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up. Comment down below, who are the rudest wrestlers you have met? Or who are the ones that you guys did not really have a good experience with? Um, the reason why I made this video, I think, is because it's very important to... Um, you know, let people know what they're going to be expecting with someone they may meet that, um, I would hate for them to meet some of the people I've met and have a bad experience like the way I did. Um, so that is why I decided to make this video just like I made a top five best wrestlers I've met because, you know, I want you guys to know who are some good ones to meet. And honestly, I could have made a bigger, nicer list than I could have, um, like mean list. The top five was really hard to put the first four absolutely number five like i told you guys it wasn't a bad ex it wasn't like the meanest wrestler but it was not a great experience either but like i said i met more nice wrestlers than i have mean wrestlers so i hope that makes you guys feel better if you guys ever want to go meet someone and you guys are nervous about it uh chances are most of the time they're super cool so with that being said guys i hope you guys enjoyed smash a thumbs up comment down below and i will see you guys tomorrow in the next video Are you a supporter of the Marine Corps? Absolutely. Great, because a former decorated member of the United States Marine Corps needs your support. And his name is